Growing up, the story of Nigeria's leading human rights activist in the name of Ken Saro Wiwa. At that moment in time, the president of Nigeria was one Sunny Abacha, he was a general from the army, and he was ruling that country with an iron fist. It is recorded and it's documented that he hanged Ken Saro Wiwa on flimsy charges. And I remember following that story in the newspapers and so on. And one of the things that I was interested in is to see or to hear or to read what Ken Sarawiwa said as he was being hanged. And I remember very well that the hangman blundered three times. And the last words, if I remember very well, that Ken Sarawiwa uttered were, God take my soul by the struggle continues. I'm talking about people and death and what we can be able to learn from that. And in this podcast, we'll look at one figure once again. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. What a man or what a woman says as they are dying tells you what is the most important thing either for them or maybe even for humanity. It gives us an opportunity to have a sneak peek of what matters. If I asked you what matters right now, you're going to answer me depending on your circumstances and your situations today. For example, if you have not paid your bills, what matters now is those bills being cleared so that you're in good books with the people that are your creditors. If you have abundance with you and I ask you what matters now, probably what you're going to say will be something to deal with defending your turf, protecting what you already have acquired and so on and so forth. But when I ask you what matters now, when you are facing death, when you know in the next 30 days you will be dead, in the next several hours you will be dead. If I asked you the question, what matters now? Your answer is going to be very instructive. Your answer is going to be devoid of things that are flimsy, things that are temporary, things that are perishable, things that do not equate to humanity, do not equate to relationships, and even do not equate to meaning of life. Because we say that the most important thing that normally people reflect upon when they come to their deathbed, two things. Number one, people reflect upon people. In other words, people reflect about relationships and so on. But then number two, people do reflect about the meaning of of life, the most important things that they could have been able to do in terms of what were they gifted with and what did they do with those gifts, what opportunities they had and what did they do with those opportunities, how urgent did they live their lives, how directional were they with their lives, how impactful, how did they contribute in their lives to make this place a better place and so on and so forth. 
it comes in sharp perspective when you are on your deathbed we've been looking at several people and what they did and what they said or how they died what they did with the moment that they were dying when they knew they were dying and so on and there are very very many stories in this world and probably even as you're listening to me you know of such a story of a person probably intimate with you probably someone you knew whose words whose final words you still remember before they died you still remember there is a cousin of ours who passed away and the words that she used to speak was spiritual there were spiritual words at towards the tail end of her life and she talked about prayer please pray for me pray for me are you praying for me are you praying for me those were the most important words that she was speaking she was telling us i mean she couldn't talk about the money she had in a bank or things death normally comes and robs us of what we thought was the most important thing and now we realize that something else is important so the message we are learning today is how can we look at death and how can we learn to focus on what matters how can we learn to focus on what the most important thing in life is and so today let us look at one more person who passed away and whose final words were recorded this is none other than jesus christ the son of god had been hanging on the cross for 6 hours six good hours from noon till 3 p.m. hanging on the cross was that six hours i think that's three hours noon to okay those are six hours total darkness enveloped the city and the scene of the crucifixion and then those two things are very extremely critical when you're dying or the moment that he died silence and darkness silence and darkness they typify death itself when you die no words uttered no light in the grave if you believe in the life after then that's where the light is going to come from but silence and darkness they spell lifelessness that's where the ground swallows the seeds before they can sprout out they are swallowed in darkness and in silence can you imagine what was happening in that moment that jesus christ was dying at around 3 pm a deep groan and a shriek this is where he spoke a deep groan and a shriek they just pierced the atmosphere like a sound and like any other and it shook people to the core according to history people normally used to utter cursing words when they are being crucified and so on and so forth but this man the words he spoke the words he spoke were words to not he said father why have you forsaken me that's what came out of the silence a whole hour of silence whole three hours of silence it was a helpless cry that went unanswered drowned by the darkness and then more silence but those were not his last words ladies and gentlemen those were not his last words because shortly after there was no answer to his question why have you forsaken me shortly after I think he uttered the most powerful words a dying man can ever utter especially a man who was on a mission he said three words it is finished and then he bowed down his head and yielded his spirit yielded his spirit gone but not finished Now let me explain what I mean by saying he yielded his spirit. There is something technical around the death on the crucifixion because the death by crucifixion saps your strength and gives you the utmost punishment you can ever meet on a human being. Because 
the guys who invented crucifixion had tried very many other types of death like you know being boiled in oil being split asunder i mean being thrown in a fire all kinds of bizarre types of death but they found out that they were too quick and so they devised the most insidious cruel death where you will waste away choking on your own blood choking on your own breath hanging on that particular cross you using your legs that have been pierced to support you and your diaphragm so that you can be able to breathe and so you, the more you raise yourself the more you are causing the pain in the feet to shoot up so you are being pained but you have to go through that pain in order to breathe it is a death like no other but the guys who were crucifying this man they needed this thing to end so that they can go and do their religious activities it was nearly the sabbath and so they decided that if these guys are not going to die fast we better kill them the best way to kill a man who is on the cross guess what it is to break their feet and so they broke the feet of those other guys that were crucified so that they can die faster why because they can no longer support their diaphragm as they breathe the support is gone the fulcrum is gone but then they come to Jesus and they find that he has given up the ghost he has yielded to death himself by saying those words it is finished he said it is finished the word it is singular it has only one thing to refer to and that was the mission that was the purpose that was the vision that this man was on and we can learn one thing ladies and gentlemen that we are on a mission and we are people who have been called for something we are not living on this world to pay bills paying bills is just a minute tiny fraction of being alive but we are alive to be on a mission to accomplish a mission and i think the very last words that all of us need to speak whether we are speaking to ourselves especially when we're speaking to ourselves or to other people should be those words it is finished but how are you going to know it is finished if you do not know what your mission in life is how are you going to know it is finished if you do not know what your purpose in life is how are you going to know what your purpose in life is if you're not going to look at death finality of life and so we're going to start learning from this man Jesus Christ and his death the six important things that we can glean about life from the death of this visionary starting tomorrow's episode but until then think about those three words if it was you speaking what would you be referring to when you say it is finished until tomorrow bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. 
Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.